Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to What's Up, whatever number that says along there. And this is the Planet X Tempest one year and a bit review. That was about the most inevitable crash I think I've ever had. Oh. I'm walking down the rest of this. It's like ice. This bit's quite treacherous at the best of time. And <laughs> today, it was always gonna happen. Oh, I think that's the first crash I've had where it actually hurts. Oh. Okay, I'm riding again, but that might not be a good idea because I know oh, there are patches of this bit, although it's nowhere near as steep, it does get very sloppy. Oh, my levers are thick with mud now. Oh, horrible. Anyway, it's all good fun, all builds character, and uh, it makes my post-race stories to Emma when I get home a little bit more exciting. Doesn't appear to be any damage to the bike, nothing uh, out of line, which makes it probably quite a timely crash given that I'm reviewing this bike and its long-term durability. It withstood that obviously monumentally high-speed, heroic, near-death experience of a crash very well. Right, back on firmer ground. Let's go and find somewhere to begin this review. Now this is pretty much the exact spot where over a year ago I first revealed that I'd got myself a Tempest. So not a bad place to do a quick review. For any of you that watched the six month review, I'm going to save you a heck of a lot of time and tell you that I'm going to be going over old ground, repeating myself and my opinion hasn't changed. You know how I feel about this thing, I blooming love it. It's done nothing to diminish my affections. I have, however, put it through some new experiences, which I now am qualified to comment on. Bike packing, mountain biking. All right, that's about it. Uh, oh, and crashing. So, there is a little bit of fresh information there for you. Can I just say, right, for anyone that doesn't wear a bike helmet, that was a pretty pathetic slow crash that I just did, but I did hit my head on the floor and there was a graze on the side of my helmet there to prove it. That would have been the side of my head. That's it, I don't really need to say anything else. Uh, my head feels fine. I think I've lost a few of the remaining brain cells that I had, but um, thank you, helmet. Right, Planet X Tempest. I'll give you the brief specs for anyone that didn't watch the six month review, uh, and I'll let you know what I've changed. It was, when I bought it, 1,699 pounds, or was it one, maybe 1,799? which represented just the absolute ultimate bargain for a titanium gravel bike, particularly with hydraulic disc brakes. It's now a penny short of 2,000 pounds. It's still a bargain in, well, a good value. It's still good value for what you get. Um, however, it makes it harder to excuse the bits that were a bit crappy now that it's a few hundred quid more expensive. All of those bits are the bits that I've changed. Some for the purpose of weight saving, some for aesthetics, uh, a lot of them achieve both of those things. But all in all, I would say this is now, if I paid full price for everything on this bike, I would say it was about two and a half thousand pounds. And it is absolutely, in its current guise, more than a two and a half thousand pound bike, in my opinion, just for what I get out of it. Um, right, anyway, specs. 
titanium frame, beautifully made, slightly relaxed geometry, lovely welding, uh, mounts for racks and bags and mud guards, which I probably should be running. Full carbon fork, it's a Selkoff fork, which Selkoff I believe is there, is Planet X's in-house brand. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know anything about the fork. It holds the wheels on, seems to be doing a perfectly good job. I understand it's a bit of a chungus, a bit of a weighty old boy. I've not taken it out to uh, to test that, so I've certainly not had any problems with it. Uh, it's a SRAM Force One 1x11 group set, which I love. Hydraulic disc brakes, as I mentioned, which come with 160 mil discs front and back, work beautifully. I'm fully a disc brake convert, although they can be a little bit squeaky and noisy. An 11 to 40 tooth cassette, 40 or 42? I'm not going to count them. I'm going to say 40, 11, 40. Uh, I've changed the, uh, the chain ring as well. That was a 42 tooth SRAM Force chain ring. Nothing wrong with it at all. Looked nice wasn't particularly heavy I just fancied a change uh, and I've changed it twice since actually both of which have made progressive improvements the first change went from that standard 40 tooth no standard 42 tooth to a 40 tooth absolute black oval and although I can't attest for any benefits from the ovality of it I can tell you just the the quality the smoothness the quietness the looks the weight were, were all um, very much worth the investment so much so, I've since gone another step further and invested in a 36 tooth absolute black oval chainring. I bought that one specifically for the Pickles 50 bike packing, mountain biking, absolute mud slug fest. And thank God I did. I'm convinced it got me out of trouble on more than one occasion. So that was even more of a worthwhile investment. So the bike in its standard guys had Selkoff alloy seat post, bars, stem, Vittoria Randoner tyres and Fulcrum Racing 7000s, which I think are now 9000s in the standard spec. I don't know what the difference is. It's hard to be critical because obviously to meet a budget, things corners had to be cut and that is clearly where the corners were cut. The tyres were ridiculously heavy, but on the positive side, they were very smooth, absolutely bomb proof. You can ride over a bed of nails and come out the other side unscathed. Uh, but they, they weighed about 810 grams each I believe so I've swapped those out for Panaracer Gravel King SKs which are about 400 grams each so obviously a significant saving there they got they're slightly knobblier as well although not knobbly enough for the kind of riding I've been doing recently but they ride nicely not as smooth on tarmac obviously as the randoners were but they do a brilliant job they're actually a very very good all-rounder I've swapped out the wheels for very similar they're in, in fact other than how they look they're exactly the same wheel. They're Fulcrum Racing 4 DBs, the DB being disc brake. The only difference, from what I understand, is they have a deeper rim. So that was an aesthetic choice. I, I love the look of deeper rims on bikes. They were actually a purchase out of necessity though. The necessity being that I stupidly rode through a very deep puddle which had a ridiculous pothole hiding beneath it, which kind of sent me off the bike a little bit and put a dent in my front wheel. So yes, I'm sure I could have just replaced that damaged front wheel or even tried to repair it, but it was an excuse to get some, some sexy looking deep dish wheels. The consequences of the deeper dish are 10 grams, I think, in weight for the pair. Nothing more than that. They are too thin internally, without a doubt. I would definitely benefit, or the tires would definitely benefit from a, a nice curved profile and wider internal rim width. But they were cheap-ish, 300 and something pounds. Like I say, not particularly heavy. The deeper section hasn't caused me any problems in crosswinds. Uh, but again, I'm mainly riding off road sur surrounded and protected by trees. So I can't imagine that being a problem at any point. And um, I'm really pleased with them. I would love some nice, expensive, carbon, proper, wide, deep gravel wheels. However, having hit that pothole, I am 100% convinced that would have shattered a carbon wheel. The force at which I hit it, it was pretty nasty. And um, I'd rather dent a cheap alloy wheel than shatter an expensive carbon one. There you go. Anyway, I've got ahead of myself. I'm talking about the upgrades. The standard package, as I mentioned, the main reason for the upgrades was weight saving. It was advertised at 9.47 or 9.74 kilograms. 
in a size medium, which is what I've got, which is about a 54 centimeter frame, that's balls. Even with extremely light titanium egg beater pedals on, in its standard trim, this was close to 11 kilograms with the original tires and the ridiculously heavy and pretty ugly seat post, bars, stem. Is there anything else? Oh, the saddle as well. I've changed the saddle, although that saddle actually wasn't too bad and I've kind of gone back to one which weighs probably about the same. But anyway, nearly 11 kilograms. With the changes I've made, albeit they're relatively expensive, but they are nice high-end kit, this now weighs, when I get the bags and crap off it, with pedals, it's 9.01 or 02, depending on which way the wind's blowing that day. So that can really definitely be felt, particularly on climbing in muddy situations. It, um, it's made a big difference. The bike feels more lively, but in a nice way. It's, got this, it's very confidence-inspiring in every aspect, thanks probably to the, the cushioning effect of the titanium frame and obviously the, the geometry, but it feels... I'm throwing it down things I, I never thought I'd throw it down. Probably shouldn't, given that the tyres aren't grippy enough, but um, it, it kind of makes you want to do that. It's, it's comfortable for long runs, perfectly capable on tarmac as a road bike, but it's just so much fun when you get it off into these kind of places, but a little bit drier. So weight-wise, not as advertised, but now nine kilograms, I think, for what would total about two and a half thousand pounds, I think actually represents pretty good value still. I think if you were to try and buy a pre-built titanium gravel bike that weighed that little um, with the spec that this has got, I think you'd be looking at probably, I, I mean, I don't know, I'm guessing, but I, I reckon you're looking at eight, 900 pounds more than that at least. And that's not even for a sort of boutique brand. That would be for something like a, a Ribble or something like that. Anyway, so on to the upgrades. Data Superleggera RS carbon seat post. Data Superleggera RS stem. Data Gravel 100 handlebars, which, and I've narrowed those slightly. The standard bars were a 42. I've gone for a 40, which again, just makes it feel a little bit more lively at the front, but just adds to the, the fun factor. The one thing I will say is if you're going to buy this from the, uh, from the Planet X website, when you're doing your bike build, please spec up your bar tape. The standard bar tape on this was a basic, very thin, not at all cushiony, polystyrene kind of material. And I would imagine in absolutely ideal conditions, it was okay. But if it's slightly too cold, or, sorry, slightly too wet or slightly too hot, so you sweat, there was no grip there at all. And like I say, cushioning was horrendous. So I've just got some cheap FWE. I mean, it's this, I don't even know what it is, but it's just FWE from Evan Cycles bar tape. It's nice and grippy, very padded, and I've double wrapped it at the top, so I've got really thick extra cushioning on the, uh, on the flats. Uh, and obviously, I've, as you can see there, I have topped it off with some extraordinarily bespoke luxury uh, bar ends, which are corks from a couple of bottles of 19 Crimes, my favorite red wine. So yeah, they, I quite like those, I think they look quite cool. So those are the finishing kit upgrades. Saddle, by the way, I mentioned, it, the standard saddle was a Cel, uh, San Marco or Cell Italia. San Marco, I think. Is that a make? I think it is. It was actually okay, quite comfortable, a little bit firm, but very heavy. I do have a carbon WTB SL8 or slate, which weighs as much as like a cream cracker. Uh, and it's actually okay for an hour, hour and a half rides, maybe. Anything longer than that, for some reason, it just starts to eat into me a little bit. This is the same shape and sort of profile and size as the SL8, but with a lovely, lovely little bit of sort of memory foam cushioning. So this is my go-to saddle at the moment, albeit a little bit heavy, but it's, it's very comfortable. Moving down to the group set, as I mentioned, changed the chain ring. Uh, nothing else has changed, that's all standard. I'm absolutely converted to one by systems. A couple of reasons. One, very simple to use, albeit actually, I will say the 11 to, 40 spread that I've got on the rear teeth. Is it? Oh, I might be 1142. Anyway, whatever it is, there is a slight gap in the ratios in around the sort of fifth, sixth gear. I can't quite find the rhythm I want. So something in between those gears would be spot on. But I would imagine that's very much down to riding style and and preference. Certainly not um, not a major problem. But it's a, a 12 or 13 speed one by system is, in my opinion, now just the holy grail. I don't think I would ever want front mech ever again i mean not only for the convenience of it front mechs are just shit. i mean 
it's those two bars that basically just sort of ram up against the chain and jam it from one cog to an I mean so anyway I've probably upset a lot of people but I love this is probably my favorite part of the bike is the clean line with no mech on the seat tube all bikes should be like that I, mean, I, I look at my Cervelo and I've got quite I've got SRAM red ETAP which are actually quite nice looking units but even that the front mech I look at it on my bike and just, so group set absolutely fine very smooth very quiet particularly with the absolute black chain ring that I've added the cranks are a very or were a very beautifully finished polished carbon which was a surprise to me I wasn't expecting that when I got the bike looked really nice but they scratch very easily uh, it must be the way I ride but I think the inside of my heel is catching the top part of the crank there so I've just got grazing all the way along it and I don't think there's anything I can do about that which is a shame the levers are also carbon very nice it's got a great changing mechanism which is like one lever just on your right hand small click to go to a harder gear deeper click to go to an easier gear and that's it simple as you like uh, what else can I tell you what have I not mentioned yet brakes brakes are lovely the calipers are beautiful they're in finished in this kind of anodized glossy jade finish which looks really nice and more importantly they work really well I have had issues with noise squeaky discs and I think that's just a matter of finding the right cleaner in terms of maintenance over the year I've had to do nothing even the tubeless tires which again I'm now completely converted this has been sitting in my shed for well it was sitting there from the 4th of July until about two weeks ago not having moved at all and the tubeless tires just held air absolutely fine I've not had to do anything to them actually interestingly on that note and speaking of the wheels it may have changed now but Fulcrum did advertise that these were tubeless compatible only with Schwalbe tires this is this is proof that that's not the case they're a bit of a fiddle to get set up but that was mainly because the original rim tape was horrendous so just retaped it and um, like I say they've been absolutely fantastic other maintenance I mean this is a massive I mentioned this in the previous video but this is a huge testament to it this hasn't been washed since July the 4th either I chipped off some big chunks of the South Downs way other than that it's it was covered in crap and getting it out for this ride honestly was like getting it out and riding it for the first time smooth quiet again going back to my Cervelo which is a different beast altogether I suppose they're working in a, a smaller sort of performance window but that would be jet washed and polished and re-lubed after every single ride this one I feel quite comfortable just to chuck it in the shed forget about it bring it out again in a month's time and and know that it's going to be good I will just say by the way I am not in any way associated affiliated or endorsed by planet x at all i just i'm you know i'm a bit of a bargain hunter and, and that's what this proved to be the only other maintenance was i changed the front brake pads and uh i do need to do the rears I haven't got around to it yet but they do seem to wear out pretty quickly but i would imagine there are third party pads sorry one second yeah i imagine there are third party pads that are either give better performance or better longevity but I've not looked into it at all I've just stuck with the standard SRAM ones and there we go that's it I've mentioned this in previous videos I'm not a sprinter I'm not a climber I'm not anything I'm the most average cyclist there is so I can't tell you the finer details of how the frame performs or anything like that other than to tell you I'm a whatever kilogram 46 year old average bloke that absolutely loves riding this thing in pretty much all conditions it's proven to be good on the roads it's not actually a bad climber proof of the pudding being that i did my best ever time up a pretty notorious hill around here called toys hill on this bike really hard to gauge because of fitness and weather conditions and all the rest of it compared to when i did it on my Cervelo. but the main point was it didn't feel terrible it felt like it could climb you're not going to be going setting comms up month one two but it will get you to the top and probably more comfortably than most other bikes you're not going to be sprinting for points and green jerseys but it's got a fairly decent turn of speed on the road you're not going to be throwing it through some proper gnarly mountain bike trials unless you're stupid um, but if you do the likelihood is you'll get out the other side albeit you'd have to have done it very gingerly very slowly but most of that's down to the tyres big fat knobbly tyres is definitely the next thing I'm sticking on this bike so as I mentioned, just repeating myself basically from the previous review. Absolutely love it. 
in terms of the new things I've tried, uh, the first one being the wicked, brilliant, hilarious bike packing, very short bike packing trip of the Pickles 50. Um, I'll, I'll jump back on the bike and I think we'll chat about that while I ride. <laughs> I'm just sliding, <laughs> full, full rear wheel lock, <laughs> it's actually not even that wet here, it's just very steep, ah oh, there's a, there's a root boy, <laughs> oh no please don't, please don't, please don't, back wheel sliding sideways, oh, I still can't stop, there we go, oh my god, <laughs> that was terrifying, <laughs> what a p I wonder if I should let some pressure out my tyres, you know. In fact, I'm definitely going to. Alright, see if that gives me any more traction. Oh, shit. <laughs> didn't start very well. I didn't let too much out, but just enough just to take the edge off, I think. Ooh, that was sketchy. I've crashed along here before. When I was trying out my specialised LA as a gravel-ish bike and uh, it, I found its, its limits on this particular path because again I don't think it comes across on camera but it's, it's sloping off to the side quite severely so the main problem is the back wheel doesn't stay in line with the front wheel it slips off down the hill to the side of me oh sh like that uh, oh, I can't even get going again now uh, right another walk you know I was just saying how I can do a ride get the bike filthy just chuck it away and forget about it I don't think that's the case after this ride What do I pick? I think I'm going to have to pick the puddle. Nice and slowly does it. Right, I should probably clarify something. I know I was just singing the praises of this thing on and off-road. But make no mistake, this is not a mountain bike. As I am fully discovering... Hang on. Today. And on my bike packing trick. Trip. Trip. So bikepacking with a Planet X Tempest, absolutely perfect. But actually, I say perfect. One, one thing, and it's I don't I don't even know if it's a thing. In the size that I've got, the size 54 medium, the available space between the top tube and the down tube for bikepacking bags is pretty minim minimal. So a frame bag such as the one I've got, the pod sack that I've got and have heavily modified doesn't allow for two bottles I've had to completely reshape it to fit in a 750ml bottle on the seat tube and a 500ml bottle on the down tube so it's because of the sloping top tube that uh, that space is restricted so both aesthetically and from a practical point of view a slightly more horizontal top tube would be my preference however riding from home to Brighton and sort of through the woods a bit fully laden with oh shit hang on this is bad okay I survived just yeah fully laden with a, fra a handlebar roll bag another smaller handlebar bag a very large seat pack and a frame bag it was absolutely fine I didn't I didn't even really notice it, I'll be honest. It seemed to just be there without me having to think about it too much. And those bags were enough to carry a tent, sleeping bag, sleeping mat, clothes, cooking, which was a complete waste of time, like a stove and pots and pans and whatnot. Obviously all my bike accessories, pump, spare tubes. I had a drone, batteries, all the electrical gubbins that seem to be part of my cycling life. And they're absolutely fine. So it works really well. 
Most importantly though, it was just incredibly comfortable. The riding was very mixed terrain on the journey down there. Uh, fields, roads, up and down. And at no point was the, the bike the problem. My legs and lungs, however, weren't quite as good, but the bike was fantastic. So, albeit it was a pretty brief bike packing escapade, it, would per it worked perfectly and I'd have no hesitation in doing multi-day multi trips with this bike. The following morning was the actual Pickles 50 ride. And as soon as I saw everybody turn up on a mountain bike, most full suspension, a couple of hard tails, but generally full suspension with very fat knobby tires, uh, I kind of had an inkling that I was on the wrong bike. And just to go back to my earlier point, this definitely isn't a mountain bike. And I was found out very much on quite a lot of the trails, but I survived. I made it without crashing through nearly all of them. I had three very small, embarrassing, slow speed tumbles with wet roots and whatnot. But other than that, it was more capable than I think it should have been. And particularly again, on the tires that I'm running. I keep going on about the tires, but obviously they are the, your contact patches and on loose, muddy, wet surfaces, some big fat knobs would have made a huge difference. And this bike would have been, again, not a mountain bike, but perfectly capable on the terrain we were dealing with. Our balls, the gate shut. I think that's a, as much as I can tell you. I hope I haven't missed anything important. If I have, feel free to put a comment below. I'm happy to answer any questions I can. I'm a little bit slow in reading them and getting back, but I'll try to make sure I answer all of them eventually. I will also do a full review on all the bike packing gear, the bags, the tents, all the rest of it. Obviously I had a mission to get all that stuff for less than 150 pounds. So I will let you know how I got on with the price. I should have done it before now, but I genuinely just can't be asked to get it all out again. <laughs> but uh, I will do that soon. And as I mentioned, if you do want a slightly more comprehensive review of the bike, check out the six month review if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope it's been of some interest and use to some of you at least. If, if you did like it, please feel free to hit that like button. If you didn't, well done for getting this far in a video that you didn't like. Feel free to hit the dislike button. I don't know what it actually does, but it might actually still benefit the channel. It's engagement, isn't it? So <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching and uh, I will see you all very soon.